Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study this morning. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day, for the time that we have uh, together to open your word and to receive light and strength. We ask for prayer for each person. You know the struggles that we face in this world of sin. And we pray for those searching for truth. We just ask, Lord, that you can strengthen them, that you can bring a power into our lives, a conviction that we may be truly converted. Help us to surrender to you each moment of each day, to trust in your guidance, and uh, for you to reveal to us our sins, our need of you, and also your mercy and grace and power to help us. Help us as we um, look at, continue to look at the book of Judges and to correctly apply these verses to the present time. We pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, I guess on the Gregorian calendar, it's the 10th day of the fifth month today. Whatever that means symbolically, as far as what we're studying, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it is something that uh, we take note of, these different dates. And not in a way in numerology, we're not saying this is some auspicious day to do something or anything like that. We just note that these symbols, as we, as we measure the time, as we pass through events, um, we start to notice God's hand and leading and uh, in our studies. So uh, what we've been doing, of course, has been going through Judges chapter 5, the song of Deborah and Barak. And we had some progress yesterday. So just to sum up, basically the problem that I was having is we have all of these symbols that lead us to, and this is basically from, we go from 18 to 25, all of these symbols tie us to uh, December 25th, 2021. So this is the battle at the River Kaishan. It's also the battle of Tanakh um, by the waters of Megiddo, right? So it's described in different ways. These become symbols. Tanakh and Megiddo are mentioned the first three times in the Bible in Joshua 12, 21, Joshua 17, 11, and Joshua 21, 25. Those give us the symbols of 252, 187, and 525. And so this leads us to Judges 5.25. And um, we could see that what, what's being shown here is a message arriving. Um, and we see that this, this message is being presented um, as in opposition to this other message. That is, this is a repeat of history, and we have... The message of Sisera, which it was Parminder's message, which was defeated on November 9th, 2019. And here we have the 777 days. And at the end of that period, the past history is being presented to this movement. Right? That is, we've spent the time studying. And as we've studied, We've had all of this light that now the movement should be examining. Does the movement accept this light, this evaluation? No. Right? So, so we know that they don't. And so what we have to do is we have to try to say, how, where are the symbols that show us this? Right? And how do we place them on a line? So when we looked at this yesterday, um, we looked again at Tanakh. The symbol in Tanakh is this 5-8 or 8-5-9. So that's 8-59. So Tanakh is 8-5-9-0, but we can leave out the zero. And this 8-59 we had noticed before. That is, it was the number of days from July 18, 2020, 
to November 24th, 2022. So that 589 days in octal form is 1533. And so we had noted that back then. But now when we look at November 24th, and you can see that there, you can see the 859 days. So in octal, that's 1533. But, um, and, and there on that date, we had discovered the 2688. So the 2688 days is an application for the, an additional extension of time. Now, technically it goes to April 4th, 2030, right? That is, if you go from the beginning of November 24th, 2022, to the beginning of April 4th, 2030, it would be 2,688 days. So to go to April 5th, 2030 is an exclusive count. Um, I'm just gonna borrow one of these here. Yes. Right. So I'm gonna just draw this in here. So, diagram here. So we're going to go from here to here. I don't even know. Probably don't even need to, to add that. Now, um, what I will add. Now, this, this period of time is uh, as you can see, it's 2520 plus 168, right? So we know we have 168. Um, uh, there's different, so it's 168 uh, times uh, 16 days. Now, 168 times 15 is 2520. So 168 times 16 is 2688. So we can see it has this relationship with this uh, 168. 168, Deborah's name is uh, 1683, I believe, right? That is the right there. Deborah, 1683, Hebrew number. So that's 168 times 3, which uh, that whole number, um, 168 times 3 is, is 504. If you divide it by 2, it's 252. So you can see how it relates to this, um, to this symbol. So the 168 is the number of hours in a week. It's the symbol that represents seven times in uh, in relationship to the week of Christ specifically. Any, anything else um, that I'm forgetting about this? So this, uh, I know there's some other things I'd figured out, but I can't remember what they are. Yeah, so 168 times three hours is seven plus seven plus seven weeks. So it's 21 weeks. Right? So I have that there. 168 times three. Uh, so it's seven weeks. Seven times seven, so it's three weeks. Okay. Um, so the 21 days. And the factorization of it is, yeah, three times three times 11 times 17. 11 times 17 is 187. So it's 187 times nine is this number. So this number here um, has all these symbols of the 168. And so we can see here, it shows up in this line, the Song of Deborah and Barak. And, and what it does is it points us to, it connects July 18th to November 24th and November 24th to April 5th. Now, technically, it's April 4th. But remember, this is an application for an extension of time. So when we get to April 5th, 2030, it's the first day of the first month, right? And so just like Miller's 
uh, prophecy, it's going to end on April 18th. But April 19th is the first day of the first month. So the last day of the Jewish year is where this extends to. Okay, now we don't know what this means as far, this date as far as an event or anything, whether it's just a symbolic date, which, which I assume that it is. At this point, I'm not, I don't believe that we can predict events. We may find that after it passes, that there's some significance um, that we didn't see, but it's a long way in the future. Um, uh, today is uh, May 10th, as we, we noted. That's the 10th day of the fifth month. Um, and I believe tomorrow is uh, 25, 20 days to uh, April 4th, 2030. So, so we have, uh, so what I'm saying is tomorrow is 168 days past November 24th, 2022, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, so tomorrow, so today is the 168th day since November 24th, 2022, right? So if we're going to count like an inclusive count, it would be the 168th day. Tomorrow would be 168 cardinal days since November 22, 2020, or November 24th, 2022. Right. So, and it was on this date that we discovered the 2,688 days that it was based upon this application for the additional extension of time. Right. And now, Aran, how did you, um, we were talking about it that morning and you just typed in 2688. Is that what you did? Pretty much on Google. Yeah, so you just Googled, and, and then we found this um, American tax application document numbered 2688. And, and it's been around for a long time since, I don't know, um, I think the oldest one we found was in the 70s or something. Um, but it's, it's been around. So this, this is an, an application for the additional extension of time. Uh, to file your taxes. So, so we say that it symbolizes that we have this, this time. Now, the context there, of course, was Colin's failed prediction. So Colin had made this prediction, which ended on, um, well, it's going to end, it ended on January 11th at the end of January 11th. But he had also made a prediction about November 8th about the election. And so it was in that context of the election as we've been discussing this what he had predicted that the republicans would run the table and you know put trump into power by making him leader of the house and then they would um impeach you know biden and uh, harris and so trump would then become the uh, the president of the united states right so this is was the scenario that was suggested now, so, of course, we know that it was a prediction, even if somebody says it's a suggestion. Um, if it had happened, he would have said it was, you know, the prediction came true, right? So, I don't know, to me, that's just a little bit of um, equivocation there. But, but we know that, that the prediction, the structure, points to the end of January 11th, 2023, and so that so this all relates to the line. Now we've we've placed these dates here in this in this chart um, tentatively, um, but that those are the dates that we have, and they seem to make sense. Now, what we didn't find in Judges was how we were doing it on some of the other lines. Now, remember, of course, this is a song, and it's a repeat of history, and. In other places, we would just say these verses apply to this way mark and these next verses apply to this way mark. But here, what it is, is a, re is a reiteration 
of what had happened. So they're going over all of these events. And we see in this account, we see these symbols that produce these way marks, but it's not as linear as we had in, in all of the other lines that we had. So we can just see that there's the symbol in Tanakh. It gives us the symbol of 859. We can see that we already had that number of days. So it gave us that way mark. And, um, and then we have this uh, period from December 25th to December 24th. Now, this is a period of a 200 or 200, 364 days, 364 days produces the, the 18720 as well. So we can, we can, uh, we can apply that. So I'm just, uh, I don't know if I should write that in here. I might do another chart of this, uh, connecting some of these other dates. As I said, that this line here, you know, I could basically put another line before it, but I, I think I want to draw out all of those dates, show basically that period of darkness, and then show this line. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll probably do another chart of it. I won't do that right now. Now, we had looked at this increase of knowledge. So we have the December 26, 2021, we begin the study of understanding the lines. So this understanding the lines um, uh, leads us to, uh, you know, to you normally you're going to have an increase of knowledge leading you to a formalization of a message. And there we placed February 12, 2022. And that, that is, we have a conflict on December 25th, 2021. And um, on February 6th, my birthday, um, so that would have been my uh, 50, uh, 59th birthday, Colin sends me an email talking about how Trump's going to get into power, somebody's speculation about it. And, and then I write a response and on February 7th, and then on February 12th, he sends me this uh, five paragraphs in 391 words, which appears to be from Jeff. Colin won't tell me that Jeff wrote it, um, but based upon what the, the personal pronoun I in, in one of the paragraphs, shows that Jeff must have written that because it wouldn't make sense any other way. Um, so so There's that's- There's also been some admissions from uh, Bonnie that uh, they, they have been in contact with Jeff. Yeah, no, and it wouldn't be them personally that are in contact with Jeff. It seems that this is through somebody who knows Jeff personally in the American group. And so it's sort of- uh, they have an intermediary between them and Jeff, is my understanding. So anyway, we have this February 12th. And um, now we already had February 12th. Um, Steve mentioned he had a talk at least one time. Right. So we know that Steve, uh, um, what's his last name? Welk. Because... Um, of the relationship of those that his family and Jeff's longtime friends. So he had a talk. So somehow, anyway, Jeff ended up responding to my statements in an email on February 7th to Colin and Colin sent these words, but wouldn't tell me who wrote them. Right. So we know it's probably Jeff. Um, now, February 12th, 2022 was also the day that Odilio presented his study. So this is going to be seven weeks later. So we, we have this conflict seven weeks later. We have Odilio's presentation. But in this context here, it's not about the presentation of Colin and Odilio. It's about the interactions. Yeah, and Steve had been on the board of FFA. So we have these interactions between me and Colin, that's what's being marked there. And then November 24th is really in a response to Colin's prediction. 
right? So, so we get this additional extension of time. Now, um, what we don't have is specifically a symbol that marks February 12th, 2022. Yeah, so 329. So there was a question regarding the death of Kath Kathy Pippinger, and that was March 29th. So this is going to be, and, and that's in uh, 2022. So we're going to have that. Um, now, um, I just, there's a photo I have here. I'm trying to find out where this is. It's not on this phone. Um, I'll, I'll deal with that. Oh, maybe it's here. So we did send a, a letter of condolence to Jeff. Okay. Yeah, so we got that back on April 28th, 2022. That's when his it's postmarked when he sent it back. Okay. Um, so, um, so the question was about the death of Kathy Pippinger. Now, the three twenty nine. We know that um, the date of the three hundred ninety one words. Well, as I said, I received it February 12th, 2022. I don't know when it was written. But this, so this is before uh, Kathy Pippinger passed away. Um, but anyway, the 329 we know is the number of days between April or not April, October 13th, 2018 and September 7th, 2019. And it's also 3,291 uh, 3, days for the entire prophetic mirror of the 777 structure from December 21st, 2012 to um, December 25th, 2021. So anyway, those are just some details. Um, now, so what we don't have is, is a symbol that I've seen yet in Judges chapter 5 that either attaches to the 391 or to February 12, 2022. Other than, um, you know, so like what I'm talking about is numerical symbols. So... So what could we find in Judges 5 that allows us to, to put February 12th, 2022 as the formalization? Right. So because all of this, you know, we're going to see all of this is just repeating the history. But, but this is a response. So this is a response by Jeff to my letter. So it's Jeff, in a sense, for a little while becomes involved in, in Colin's prediction. He knows about it. He, he gives some sort of support to some degree to it. Um, though it's more just what he sees as opposition because of how it's it's characterized, where it's coming from, um, that he sees that it's some you know rejection of, of light, which of course it isn't, but that is my response to it. 
because we know that we we looked at uh, Millerite history and we can see we're making the same mistakes. Yeah, it seems to parallel Miller precisely. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's yeah, because Miller does have this sort of response to uh, what happened with uh, the understanding of Christ moving to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, right? So he has it misrepresented, and he responds. So, so we see that Jeff does the exact same thing, even though it's something he didn't want to do. He ended up doing it anyway. So when we look at 526, um, we have a symbol that we need to examine. So we have 525, but what's 526? Is that from uh, 457 to 78? 78. 78 AD. Right. So, so here it is, what we're talking about. This is 526. Now, it's not written in here, but you, this is a chart Stephen sent me. Now, this chart has um, the 66, 666 years from the captivity of Jehoiachin to the destruction of Jerusalem, which... Ezekiel is predicting based upon uh, the count of Jehoiachin's captivity. And then we have the 777 years that Stephen noticed on December 25th, 2021. And so when we put them together, we see that the, the beginning, the 140 years, and the 251 years at the end, when added together, give us the 391. So so this gives us the 391 years, right? The 391 words. Now, what he didn't put in here is the 526. Okay, so the 526 is this verse, Judges 526. that goes from Artaxerxes' decree to the destruction of Jerusalem. So it's 526 years, it's simply 490 plus 36, if you want to think about it. Now, that happens to be my apartment number. I don't know if that means anything, but, um, you know, so we have this 526 as a symbol. And we have 251 at the end. So as you can see, then, obviously, this is 777 years, because if you had 525, and 252, it'd be 777, right? So, so the 526 relates to the 251. Now, I probably should have noted every time I've noticed 251 in either calculations or whatever, but I never have. But I've always noticed this 251 for quite a few years um, in doing these, these structures. So 251... Um, I always thought, well, you know, that's an inclusive count of 252, but often it would be just a number and it would be divisible by 251, right? So, so I never really knew what to do with 251, but we can see if we add it to 140, we get the 391. Now, as Iran notes, this verse that we're looking at, um, 526, Judges 526, is the 140th verse. Right. So so it gives us this structure. Right. Now, this all relates to what Stephen discovered on December 25th, 2021. Right. So we have this connection. So when we bring it together here, can we see that it relates to the 391 words? Uh, yes, it becomes apparent. Okay, yeah. So now that we have this kind of connection, we look at this verse, 
526. Um, we need to be able to, to see what this verse is talking about. So how does this relate to February 12th? Now, remember, February 12th is the date we have of the 391 words, but it's in response to um, first Colin on February 6th, my birthday, writing, sending me an email, just a link to a video. <clears throat> and for some reason, my computer is not changing the share, but um, we'll look at that verse as soon as it's, it's got one of those timing circles going. Um, so then I write a response of, on February 7th, and then uh, he ends up sending me this uh, 391 words. And so this 391 words obviously relates to this symbol. Is this not working? <clears throat> Well, at least, at least the WhatsApp, or not WhatsApp, the Zoom is working. It's just the share is not working. I don't know why. Okay, so I'll just read the verse. You're looking at this chart. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. Now, um, okay, so that didn't work. There we go. Not sure what's going on here. There we go. So you can see the verse now. Now, as far as the nail, um, uh, it's an unused root meaning to pin through or fast a peg, na nail, paddle, pin, stake. Right. We've looked at the word nail here before. Um, we know. Oh, it's in Isaiah 22, right? Just to review that. Usually I go like Isaiah 22, 22. Um, and that's the, the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And I normally connect that to uh, Hebrews chapter 6 right, the anchor, right, an anchor is a nail. So it's not referring to a ship's anchor in Hebrews chapter six, it's referring to a nail, right? An anchor the soul both sure and steadfast and entereth into that with, which is within the veil. So you can see the relationship that he's referring to this verse, not to a ship's anchor. Um, so, we, so we have this connection of this nail. So she put her hand to the nail. Now, you know the word hand is a very common word, yad, but you can see it has the 327 symbol in it, 3027, so March 27th symbol. Um, now this nail, um, you know, it's it's a pin, uh, it's a paddle, right? It's got these different definitions here. Uh, it's first mentioned in... Uh, Exodus 27, 19, uh, talking about the pins of the court dealing with uh, the tabernacle, right? So all the vessels of the tabernacle and all the service thereof and all the pins thereof and all the pins of the court shall be of brass, right? So we know that it's, it's used in the sanctuary. And that's why it's mentioned in connection with the sanctuary, a nail in a sure place, that's a nail in the sanctuary, one of the pins in the construction of the sanctuary. Um, and her right hand here, so the word right hand is Yamin, right? So we know like Benjamin, it means son of the right hand, Ben meaning son, right? So we have this word right hand of the workman's hammer. So the workman here is this number 6001, um, refers to uh, misery, I guess, toiling, concretely a laborer, sorrowful figuratively, um, so the workman's hammer. And the word hammer there is 1989. So that brings us to the symbol of November 9th. So it, it goes back and refers to this history um, of this movement, right? And with the hammer, he smote Sisera. She, 
she smote Sisera. She smote off his head. Now, of course, we know the word head, Rosh. It has all the numbers of July 18, 2020 in it. And she had pierced and stricken through his temples. So, so what, what is happening here symbolically that we can tie to February 12th, 2022? Is there anything? We have with the verse number itself, the 526. But is there anything else in the symbols here? So let's consider one thing. What is it that Jeff said uh, regarding um, this repeat of history? That is, when we dealt with the fall of the Soviet Union, what had happened? Think Isaiah chapter uh, 8. Where do the flood waters come up to for Judah? Up to the neck. So up to the neck. So he talked about this idea that that this just comes up to the neck, that the Soviet Union isn't destroyed. The Soviet Union falls, but the head remains, right? That's the idea? Correct. Okay. Now, when it comes to Sisera, the same thing happens. Sisera is defeated initially in Parminder's movement, but we're saying that it only came up to the neck. That is, that attitude, whatever, ideas of Parminder still existed within the movement, but they there comes a point in which they have to be addressed completely. So you're using the symbology of the severed head as up to the neck? No, I'm taking this as the, the defeat of it completely. Okay. Right. Because the head doesn't survive if you sever off the head. I mean, That's right. <laughs> That's why I couldn't make sense of it. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that, that there is something here. Now, stricken through the temples, um, uh, you know, that's the side of the head. But, you know, in English, we can use the temple to refer to a sanctuary. So to me, right. uh, maybe I'm being kind of subjective here, but when we look at uh, this nail that goes through the temples, it destroys the head, right? Yes. That's what's happening here. And so... In this exchange between me and Colin, what is being addressed is the ideas that need to be ended, right? And, and particularly, this whole discussion dealing with the 391 words had to do with the pioneer understanding of Revelation 17, right? So Revelation 17 is dealing with the seven heads, right? So if we go to Revelation 17, so just to do a great, uh, a really simple review of this, uh, the issue is that we have looked at this history, Revelation 17, in this movement, as referring to uh, the time of the end being 1798, and that, that is we're taking that this vision is occurring in 1798 and that when it talks about uh these heads five are fallen right so this is the riddle here's a mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are fallen one is and then other another is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space the way that we've understood this in this movement for a long time is that 1798 
is is when John is brought to in this vision. And so the five are fallen, are Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, pagan, Rome, papal. The one that is, is the United States. And the one that yet to come is the globalist, the UN, right? And when he, when he comes, this, the other, he's just going to continue for a short space. And then the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So we're saying that the one that was and is not, that's the papacy. Um, but he's the eighth, but he's of the seven, right? But he's going to be the eighth. He comes back into power. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. That's the UN, which have no received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as one as kings one hour with the beast. He's at one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now, the pioneer understanding is that when you have a, a prophet in vision, he can be at that time, right? You know, he can, but when you have the explanation, the explanation is contemporary with the prop with the prophet. Right. So he's going to look at the end of time. But the explanation can't be um, in the future. That, it, that is, the explanation is not given to him in the future. This is how the pioneers understood this. So when they look at the five are fallen, they looked at this, and, and they use Revelation 12, uh, 13, and 17 sort of together. They understand that this is a different beast. But in Revelation 12, they're going to look at these as the forms of government. The heads represent the different forms of government. And so one of the form of government is the Republican form. And then you have the imperial, and then you have the papal. And after the papal comes the Republican form again. So the pioneers would see that um, the eighth is the United States. So it's quite a different view than the idea that the eighth is the papacy. Now, doesn't mean that, you know, the pioneers are right and we're wrong, or that we're right and the pioneers are wrong. My view is that we, we need to recognize that both of these views are correct. That is, we are making an application in a repeat of history in a line where we can see those things. But we need to be cognizant of how the pioneers understood things. Because one of the big problems we have with this Revelation 12, 13, and 17 is we know we have the two-horned beast, and the pioneers understood the two-horned beast to be the power that brings in the Sunday law. And that two-horned beast is seen as the eighth in Revelation 17 because it's Republican, it's Republican, but it's going to be a repudiation of everything Protestant and Republican. And this fits in with what we understand. So, so to just discount all of this, uh, I don't think uh, makes sense to discount what the pioneers say or to discount what this movement has taught. I think we have to take those all into consideration. And, um, so when we look at this issue that's being discussed in that paper on February 12th, it's addressing a head that has a spike put in it, receiving a deadly wound. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, yep. Okay. So, so this issue that's being discussed in that paper, so we don't have... The only symbol we have is that 526 that gives us the 391. But, but I think that's sufficient based upon the context of, of Judges chapter 5, verse 26. Oops. Right? So the 526 gives us the 391. Okay. And um, but when we look at what this verse is describing, 
this nail that's being put into the head of Sisera has to do with ideas and understanding that needs to be addressed. All right. So this is this is this is marking a message that addresses the end of Sisera. And Sisera's message has to be removed from this movement. And that's the process that we're going through presently. The influence of Parminder, his teachings, his ideas have infected the movement and have to be removed. It distorts our perception of how to understand prophecy because it's a rejection of Miller, Miller's rules. And we just don't see that it is because we don't see clearly at this point. Any thoughts on that? Okay, so... So if we look at this here, then the next verse, at her feet, he bowed, he fell. He lay down at her feet, he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Right. So we would we could connect this with the previous verse. This is describing, though, his death. So what is it describing? In uh, his, what do you mean? Well, I mean, in his death, it's describing he's going to bow down to the feet of JL. That's right? that's that's what I'm reading out of it. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a humiliation. It now he's dead, but he's he's acknowledging symbolically um that he was wrong, right? This is a humiliation. This is talking about what we would say in, in the upper room experience. Now, of course, it would be more similar to uh, the wicked at the end of the world in that they're going to acknowledge that they were wrong, but they're going to be destroyed. But, but we can still see that this is a message that is defeated by another message, right? So this is, right. she's putting this nail. So this is a message, not a person, puts this, nail in the head of Sisera and this message of Sisera is defeated and it acknowledges that this message of JL is the correct message. Is there another way that we could look at this in the literal sense? Okay. What is Sisera doing at this point? When he gets the nail in his head? No, well, no, no. <clears throat> when, okay. What verse? What verse? If, he's if we're, if he's we're looking at 524 and 525, what, okay. is he, what is he doing that places him in JL's control? Well, he enters into her tent, right? Correct. And, and then he's going to ask for water. But isn't he seeking protection? Yeah, yeah. So this message <clears throat> is seeking protection. It's seeking to be hidden from the effects of the message that's already been given. And JL puts the nail to the head, basically showing how the message that Sisera or Parminder had presented had been false. Right. Yeah. So that would be fine. 
So this, the, it becomes clear that the message is error. Right, and that it's hidden. Well, it, it, it sought to be hidden because it was seeing the effect that it had had. It had assumed that it was going to be a victorious message. Yeah, but it's defeated. Correct. And, and so we know that, that some of Minder's teaching, those that are infected by it, they, they continue in this movement within this tent, right? But they want water, that is the Holy Spirit. But what's going to be offered them is milk or butter in a lordly dish, right? So this is something that is the understanding of these symbols, the understanding of uh, all of what we've unfolded since November 9th, 2019, because that, that, that's a message there that we market November 9th. That's the 273 and uh, the Mayan calendar, all those symbols, right? So during this time, we've been given, and, and, and Deborah and Brack, the message of De Deborah and Brack actually addressed the messages of chronology that end up defeating Parminder's movement on November 9th. But we know in the Song of Deborah and Brack, it's going to cover first the period from November 9th to December 25th. And then it's going to repeat it again using the description, but with symbols that apply after December 25th, 2021, up to April 5th, 2030. So we can see how, how this message has progressed in the movement and how it's addressed. That is, God is giving us light and messages to correct us, to defeat Sisera, because Sisera still hasn't been defeated. Right now, and this is seen as offensive by some to suggest, you know, that people are still following Parminder's teachings, but but they are right. They they're infected by his ideas and his attitude, his spirit, right? That still exists within the movement. And we see it on December 25th, 2021. We see it in uh, the reply on February 12th, 2022. And so, so here then we would have to say um, that... Uh, that we can place February 12, 2022 in these lines like that. But what if in a deeper sense, it's not just Parminder? Well, it's not Parminder personally, but it is ideas. Parminder's ideas are papal ideas. Uh, they're things that we inherited from the church because they basically uh, go back to the church in some ways, but to what we would call progressive Adventism. But what, are, what else are you suggesting? No, I mean you you hit the nail right on the head. So 526, yeah, you hit you just nailed this thing because these are papal ideas. Right. Because no. he he's he's um uh that guy's name, Jaden. Is that the name? I always get names mixed up. King of Canaan. Yes, Jabin. Yeah, okay. So he's his general, right? Cicero is the general for Jabin, yes. Yeah. So, so Parminder is presenting papal ideas to this movement. And, and those I, ideas still exist. The attitude of it, the, everything we saw with the tribunal, uh, with Stephen, John Mark, and uh, Odilio being brought before that tribunal and, and basically being excommunicated. You know, you, they ha you have to... Um, uh, you know, confess, what, what's the word there? Recant. Uh, observation. Yeah. So um, I got kicked out of this uh, FFA banner or something, or army banner thing on oh. Sabbath, or, well, actually it was the next following day because it was like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. Um, I, I just noticed that the guys first, the guy that uh, threw me out, 
the first three digits of the phone number is two five six. Okay. So I that's mean, similar to five two six, but it's not the same. No, it's not the same, but you know, it's just, plus there's yeah. a lot of other numbers that go along with it. But that was just something that just popped out into my um, line of sight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we can see that the papal spirit still exists, and it, it needs to be an end to it, right? So these 391 words, five paragraphs, we can we can attach there, and. And it's going to be 526 and 527. Those two verses are going to embody what's happening here. Um, now, uh, the next thing that we have on this line is the November 24th, 2022 waymark. That's the empowerment of the first angel's message. And, and it's this symbol of Tanakh. So we're saying that this whole battle, this first message is about Tanakh. Right. But it's going to lead to the second angel's message arriving, December 24th, 2022. So we moved an invitation there. That is the symbol there is the invitation that's given on December 24th, 2022, for what's going to be presented starting December 25th, 2022. That's the formalization. You make an invitation, you have, you know, the event, right? So the event is this line simply presented. And that's going to be 364 days from December 25th, 2021. So 364 ends up representing July 18, 2020. Um, so when we look at this as this invitation, then if we look at these verses, so we're going to continue going through these verses here. Well, we should take a long time to do this, but um, we're now going to have 528, the mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice, why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Now, now we have this symbol, of course, tarrying. Now, usually we put the tarrying time after the arrival of the second message. Um, but there is a tarrying time that connects here. Uh, okay. So when we look at um, November 24th, we know that this is about Colin's prediction, right? So his prediction failed on November 8th. We're discussing it. Um, we looked at the 1629. So the reason we... We ended up with this at all is we had looked at the 1,629 days, um, which, and, and we looked at the Thanksgiving symbol, symbol, right? So just to go back, we've looked at this many times, but just to go back to this. Uh, when we looked at November 24th, 2022, we counted 1,629 weeks. It brings us back to September 11th, 1991. Uh, people misapply uh, this the United Nations General Assembly, uh, President Bush speech at the 46th session of the United uh, 46th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, and this is conflated with the joint session New World Order speech given on 9-11-90. So, so he does a year before that, the New World Order speech. Um, and so people get those two dates mixed up. But you get September 11th, 1991. That's 1,629 weeks before November 24th, 2022. And then you have um, 1,629 days goes from June 9th, 2018. That's when Jeff has his 9-11 prayer, right? And then we noted that this Thanksgiving, so this is a repeat of this Thanksgiving. It's, uh, it's going to be four years after the Thanksgiving prediction of 2018. 
But if we go from July 18th, we get 859 days. We already had that 8590, right, with um, uh, Tanakh, right? And we can see that 859 is in base eight or octal, 1533, right? So we had put that into our lines. So we can see how this all fits, how this connects. And um, um, then we, we had in our lines, we had um, you know, 1533. So we got 1629, 1533 uh, was going to be, let me see here. Um, so then we had another application of this 589, right? So in our lines, we have from November 24th, it brings back to July 18th. But if we go to December 24th, it brings us back to October 13th. So, so we have this, this connection of this 859 symbol. So, so that's November 24th. And we're saying that this is the, the empowerment in this other chart here that we have here at the line that we're drawing right now we're saying that this is uh, the empowerment but it's if we're looking at these verses in order then we're coming to um, judges 528 right so if we're, we're going through this so the mother of sisera looked out at the window cried through the lattice why is his chariot so long in coming why tarry the wheels of his chariots, right? So we have this. Um, now, we're marking it at a waymark that we say is an invitation. But, but this is really an inquiry, right? So there's a question that's being asked. And there is a response, right? Her wise ladies answered her, yea, she returned answer to herself. Now, now does that make sense to anybody? Just, just in the narrative. No. Okay. So, so what's happening here in in these verses? So she looks out through the lattice. So, what is the lattice? I know we went over this. Is it like a trap door? Sorry. Uh, like a trap door. No, it's not a trap door. It's a lattice is a, a an overhanging or a, a work that. Um, is okay. What what is an what what is an interstice? Yeah, I, I mean I'm saying it's line upon line. Um, yes. About interstices. Um, it's kind of a cross. It's a cross hatch. Line upon line is probably the best way of putting it. Yes. So an interstice is an, an intervening space. So there's spaces, right? Right. Um, so it, it can be line upon line. Usually it's, it's a geometric says, work of some sort. Sometimes. But, you know, the sunshine filtered through the interstices of the arching trees is an example in a sentence, right? But usually closely spaced things, right, is what it talks about. A small opening or space between objects, especially especially adjacent objects or objects set closely together, as in between cords and a rope. Um, um, right. So let me just see. Yeah, I have to look at this whole thing. This is Wiktionary. Um, or components of a multi-conductor electrical cable, or between atoms in a crystal. It's an interval of time required by the Roman Catholic Church between attainment of different degrees of an order and a small interval of time free to be spent on activities other than one's primary goal. And so those are uh, the definitions. So an opening of space between objects, a fragment of space, an interval of time required by the Roman Catholic Church between the attainment of different degrees of an order 
and a small interval of time free to be spent on activities other than one's primary goal. So you can have little interstices of time in which, you know, you, you do something else, right? So that's what, that's what's given to us. This is what the lattice is, but we can think of it often usually as some kind of, of structure that has little spaces between it. So when I see the lattice, it's a pergola to me, you know, it's th exactly what you're describing. Yeah. Well, I've seen it as, um, you know, the lattices in uh, a blinds. Right? right, right. We talk about the lattices. It's the space. The lines. In the it's thing. the lines. Right, so the lines. But, you know, I see it on my blinds on my window right here. There's lattices. Uh, yeah. Um, because that's right. That's what, that's what I interpret a lattice as, is, a, is like a diffuser of some sort. Okay. So... Um, now, this, could, this is the King James, how it translates it. I'm just going to look at Young's literal translation. Through the window she had looked out, yea, she cried out, the mother of Sisera, through the lattice. Wherefore is his char de chariot delaying to come? Wherefore tarried have the steps of his chariot? The wise ones, her princesses, answer her. Yea, she returneth her sayings to herself. So, so they answer her, but she's going to answer herself anyway, right? Uh, do they not find their apportioned spoil, a, a female, two or two females for every head, spoil of finger work for Sisera, spoil of embroidered finger work, finger work, a pair of embroidered things for the necks of the spoil. So it's going to talk about embroidery, right? Um, something like what we're doing, embroidering all this stuff together to make a big well, quilt. I don't know about that, but we have, um, so there's some obscurity in, you know, poetry is often hard to interpret, uh, you know, even if it's written in your language. You know, I've written some poems which nobody here would understand uh, just because they're, extremely symbolic you'd have to take time studying them right so you have poetry here a song um and then you're translating it from hebrew into english and so that it makes it kind of difficult because you have these idioms or expressions that are really symbolic and and you're trying to translate it literally and they don't necessarily come across properly um so, so anyway, what she, she does is she asked this question and her wise lady answered her. Now, um, so, so they acknowledge it, right? Now, accession. Um, so this word af that's translated as yea, she returned answer to herself. That means accession. That is an adverb or conjunction also or yea. Adverse, ad, adverse, adversatively, though, also, although, right? Um, moreover, yea. So, so they answered her, but it doesn't tell us their answer, right? Because she's then going to answer, she's going to return an answer to herself. Now, this word returned is that word shuv, right? Shuvi, shuvi, mashulamit, right? Return, return, o shulamit. It's, it's the one that has to do with the return, right? Return to Jerusalem, the rebuilding of, you know, know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore, the word that's translated restore there is shuv. So, so we have this word returned, this shuv, um, and, and then the answer is, have they not sped? So rhetorical, weren't they fast? Have they not divided the prey? So this dividing of the prey um, should remind us of Maher Shalom, 
Ahashbaz. That's the word shahal, shalal, right, in Isaiah chapter 8. Now, um, to every man, so the word every here is just rosh. So rosh is normal. That's the first word in the Bible, berashit, right, in the beginning, right? To translate it as every is kind of odd. Um, right, so if I go here, you're going to see that, you know, Rosh is normally translated as head. Heads, top, beginning, some, tops, companies, captains, first, company, principal, captain, chapters, high, beginnings, and roots. chiefest. Every, it's only translated once that way. Um, and I don't think it's a very good translation of that word, to be honest. But, um, and, and I don't know if I would translate this 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 way at all. Um, um, here is a translation that's much, much different. I'm sure they won the war. And they are now taking things from the people they defeated. They are driving those things among themselves. Each soldier is taking a girl or two. This is a English uh, version that's easy. Here's another one. Um, have they not found and divided the spoil? Right? So a womb or two for every man. Spoil of dyed materials for Sisera. So you're going to see they're going to translate this damsel as womb. Spoil, dye of, spoil of dyed materials embroidered. Two pieces of dyed work embroidered for the neck as spoil. Um, contemporary English version. Sisera and his troops are finding treasures to bring back, a woman or maybe two for each man, and beautiful dresses for those women to wear. You can see how bad some of these translations are if you're trying to uh, study God's word. Um, that's not going to be there. This is an old translation. Um, so if you look at this here, I'm going to try to address this here. So here we have the Hebrew. I know you can't read it, but when I click on, it's going to give me these words here. And you can say uh, this word lo, which it just means not in Hebrew, right? And, and then you can see we have this word here, matzah. It's, it's to come forth, right? So they have not come forth. Chalak, uh, which means to be smooth, um, uh, but it can mean lots of different things, right? A portion, distribute, divide, flatter, give, uh, take a portion, receive, separate, smooth. So they have not uh, divided, right? And then you see shalal, right? That's going to be the spoil, the booty, the prey. And and then you're going to have racham, which means compassion. So now it's going to mention this word compassion, which means maiden, maiden da, uh, damsel, uh, womb, mercy, pity. So it has lots of different meanings, right? Um, so to just to translate it as damsel, because uh, it can just mean compassion, right? Um, and then it's going to have uh, the next word, rachama that is maiden, right? So uh, so this is compassion. The next word is maiden. So that's why they're going to translate it as damsel. And then, uh, and then it says to the head, because it has a lamech at the beginning of rush, right? So the compassion of, a da of damsels to the head, and then it has um, geber, that is, to the head of the valiant, the spoil or the prey or the booty, that's shalal again. And, and then it has tzabah, uh, and here it's tzabahim, so it's in the plural. 
Um, so it's going to talk about these diverse colors or dyed things that are dyed different colors. And then it says Sisera, right? So it has Sisera's name to Sisera, the prey, Shalal again. And then again, uh, it's going to mean the diverse colors. So you're going to have that Seba again. And then you have Rachma, Rechma, a variegation of color, right? Embroidery. Uh, and then Seba again, right? The divide dyed colors. And then you're going to have, again, the embroidery. So they mention this twice. And then you have uh, this word, um, uh, tsavar, tsav, tsavvar. So it just doubles the one letter. That's number 6677 in Hebrew. Sense of binding, the back, back of the neck. That is which where burdens are bound onto the back of the neck. Um that word is first used in Genesis 27, 16. Let's just get King James. She put the skins of the kids and the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Right, So that's going to be referencing uh, Joseph's uh, deception of his dad. So uh, Rebecca is going to do that. Not Joseph's deception. Jacob. Not Joseph, Jacob's. That's what I meant. Jacob's. My brain said Joseph, but it's, my mouth said Jacob, or the other way around. Anyway, whatever I said, I'm trying to do too many things at once, but thanks for correcting me. So Jacob's deception. And uh, then we go back here. Um, and then we just have Shalal again at the end of that. So, so in looking at this, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Um, so there's nothing where it says a damsel or two. So, for instance, it doesn't say two damsels. It doesn't say a damsel or two, right? That's where I have part of the problem with this because you're going to have a womb of a damsel. So to the head man right uh the womb of a damsel but it's in plural right so damsel's wombs right so so when they translate it it's like a damsel or two i don't see that in the hebrew um so what is it that sisera is seeking what is it that this battle is about why is the mother of Sisera. So who's the mother of Sisera? Everyone? It's the papacy, right? Can we agree on that? that that's, yeah. Okay. Yes. And what is Sisera seeking? What is that that the papacy wants Cicero to come back with? Control. Of women, right? Of churches. Correct. Right? So that's what's being talked about here. So the spoil that Cicero was seeking was this movement, right? The control of this movement. So then it talks about this these diverse colors, which is uh, the prey of diverse colors, right? So there's, I mean, we can relate this to the story of Joseph, the coat of many colors. Can, can we relate this to Joseph's uh, story? How else can we relate this? Or can we? Because we have the structural chiasm in the story of Joseph. 17, the 11, the 11, the 17. If Sisera's message was to be successful in this movement, what would Sisera's message do? It was pretty liberal. 
What's that? That was quite liberal. Okay, it's quite liberal. Yeah. Okay. But but the 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 purpose of it was to defeat something, right? Is it was it the purpose to remove the prophetic waymarks? Right, to destroy the waymarks, to destroy the lines. To destroy the prophetic waymarks. Yeah. The prophetic waymarks, the lines. So and he was doing the opposite of what he said he was doing. Because remember with Chawatu, he was he attacked Chawatu on the basis that to Chawatu was destroying 9-11, which Chawatu wasn't. If you examine into what Chawatu was presenting, it would actually help us understand 9-11 correctly, right? But Parminder was the one destroying the symbols of 9-11 and everything else. So to divide the prey, as we see here, um, to be smooth, to apportion, to separate, to divide, flatter. Uh, does this any of this describe Parminder? I would have to say yes. Okay. Now, when we, we look at the, the prey here, because I go back to Isaiah chapter 8, Mahar Shalah Hashbaz, right? This is actually dealing with the 2520. And Parminder de tried to destroy the 2520. And you can see how that relates to the story of Joseph and how it relates to this coat of many colors that he's given and he's sold into slavery. So it refers back to all of this structure that, that this movement has created. And that is going to be the spoil. Right? Now it's the papacy, the mother of Sisra, that is, is questioning why this is taking so long. Right? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Now, we know the wheels within wheels idea. We also know that chariots are in Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. We have uh, chariots, right? And, and the, word, the use of the word. What's that? Tarry. The use of the word tarrying as well. Has some yeah, we, have the, we have the tarrying, but normally we put the tarrying time after the arrival of the second message. Because... There's a disappointment there, and then there's a tearing time. Uh, but here we're, we're saying that this tearing has to do with this prediction, and we're given an additional extension of time, right? So we're given additional time, um, but not so much that Colin's prediction can be fulfilled, you know, in some future date, because I don't think it's going to be. But this movement gets stuck into a tearing time. A disappointment arrives, right? And and so we have this empowerment of this message. This message of November twenty fourth is meant to address Colin's uh, prediction and show that it's not going to be fulfilled, right? That's what we get on November twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. And then we make this invitation. So we're saying that this invitation. Um, relates then to uh, this tarrying time, right? This tarrying time then must be December 24th, 2022, where, where I make that invitation. That invitation is connected here. But it, what's being shown is the mother of Sisra looking through the lattice, questioning why his chariot is taking so long. And then the wise ladies answered, but it doesn't give what their answer is. She instead returns answer to herself. Right? Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man? Right? To all of these men, didn't aren't they going to get their 
their church, right? These damsels, the womb of the damsels, the comfort of the woman, consolation, whatever the word is um, there, uh, to Sisera, a prey of diverse colors. He wants to conquer this message, this movement. Now, the thing about this, then, is we get up to here. Um, it, it's going to bring us to the arrival of the second message. And then we have to try to figure out how do we address these other dates? How are they symbolized in these lines, right? So we know, of course, there's the invitation. And, of course, there is uh, the formalization. And then we're saying that January 11th, 2023 is just the end of that. So th this would relate to all of these verses. And we're just going to deal with this in more detail. But this is, um, in a sense, this is at the tearing time. And it's divided, right? So it talks about this word divide. Uh, we can see that this is, um, you know, this, this, December 25th to January 11th. And then we have symbols that lead us to April 5th, 2030, or the end of the Jewish year, April 4th, 2030. Okay. Any questions before we close? I mean, I think it's making sense. I don't think that this is, is a stretch on what we're doing here that it describes this story, but this story gives us these symbols. Right. So these lines have to be produced by this part of the song. We'll, we'll finish this up tomorrow. Okay, so let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and for each person who has participated. We know that there's a lot of information and we need time to sort this out, help us to study individually, to understand the symbols here employed. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, you can continue to lead and guide us in these studies. Bring us together tomorrow morning according to thy will. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.